Okay, so it's great pleasure to have uh, uh, Ji Wang O from uh, Oxford. He's going to tell us about the twisted holography and M2 and five lines. Please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me to speak here. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, twisted holography and of M2 brain and M5 brains. And this is partly based on the work with Davide Gayoto and Yi Hao Zhu. But uh, I'll mostly review uh, the recent work by Kevin Costello, who pioneered the study, of course, with C. Lee, who is in the audience. Um, so ADS-CFT is the duality between the super, super gravity in the uh, ADS space time, com some compact manifold, and the super conformal field theory on the boundary of the ADS. So people have studied many uh, aspects of the uh, ADS-CFT by computing the partition function and correlators of both sides and match them successfully. And, but still uh, the ISO, entire uh, spectrum of the both side is quite uh, elusive and we are far from uh, uh, saying that it is isomorphism of the operator algebras. So it's a little uh, less ambitious to, um, to focus on some protected subsector of the ADS-CFT and try to uh, where we can um, draw some exact isomorphism of the operator algebra. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. So we're gonna focus on some certain protected, protected subsector of the ADS-CFT by twisting both sides. So it's familiar in the field theory that um, we first pick some neopotent supercharge and focus on some Q cohomology that is defined in the topologically twisted quantum field theory. And usually it, it yields the associative algebra of operators. And the question is, uh, what's the analog for the supergravity side? What is the twisting? So first recall that supersymmetry is a local or gauge symmetry in, in the context of the supergravity. And here, uh, some killing spinner parametrize the supersymmetry and in the field theory, uh, limit, it becomes the uh, rigid uh, supersymmetry parameter epsilon. And we also know that to study gauge theory systematically, we introduce ghost for the gauge symmetry. And in, uh, for now, it is a ghost for the local supersymmetry. And because of supersymmetry is fermionic, we consider bosonic ghost. And the definition of the supergravity given by Costello and Lee is that um, it is supergravity with particular components of the ghost for local supersymmetry non-zero. So it is a little vague, um, uh, uh, not straightforward for a physicist to, uh, who is not familiar with the BRST or BB formalism. So in practice, uh, it is better to explain it in terms of the more familiar field theory language. So let's recall that uh, in the, uh, let, let's consider some certain twist for the 4D and equal one supersymmetric field theory. And I'll explain more in the later in the talk and it, it is called holomorphic twist. So let's consider uh, super, N equal one supersymmetry with a uh, chiral multiplet phi and the scalar component is phi and the while, while spinner is chi, uh, psi alpha. And here alpha and alpha dot are the while spinner indices and the supersymmetry transformation is generated by Q alpha and Q alpha dot. And we holomorphically twist the theory by picking some certain supercharge uh, for now, uh, it is Q, which is Q minus, for instance, and focus on Q cohomology. And by twisting, uh, there are many ways to describe it, but one way to describe it is that uh, we uh, pick some supercharge and, some, and set some uh, particular uh, uh, supersymmetric parameter that corresponds to it to one or a finite number and others zero. So when we, uh, to, to study this uh, Q cohomology, we start from the gen gener generic supersymmetry transformations and expand it um, and just uh, insert the particular component of the super, uh, symmetry transformation parameter into one and the, uh, set the other to zero. So the point is um, to study some Q cohomology in some twisted uh, supersymmetric field theory, we pick some su uh, supersymmetric pr symmetry parameter, one, uh, some, some of them finite and the other zero. 
So this philosophy applies exactly also in the supergravity. So similarly to twist, twist the supergravity, we only keep some particular component of the local supersymmetric parameter, which I denote as psi uh, non-zero and uh, others to zero. This is the meaning of the setting the some boson it goes to uh, finite. So in, uh, so in with, with this given definition, the twisted uh, holography is the duality between twisted super, uh, super symmetric quantum field theory and super gravity with some particular background. So the advantage of the uh, twisted holography is that everything becomes algebraic. Uh, so we can compare the uh, uh, exact spectrum of the both sides exactly. And with some constraint, uh, which is called so-called omega background, the gravity side simplifies a lot, and uh, this is basically become this basically becomes 5D topological holomorphic turn science theory. I'll explain it in detail later. So uh, to to before going to some detail, I'll just describe some pre preliminary knowledge, uh, which I assume everyone would know, but I'll. Uh, to set up some convention and language, I'll describe it briefly. So there are two types of uh, to topo uh, twist, topological twist, um, which is called topological and holomorphic. Uh, so this name is de uh, determined by some, uh, the thing that I will describe. So it, when, when we twist the theory, we uh, start, uh, we modify the Lorentz symmetry group by using the R symmetry group. And we then, uh, with the new, uh, under the new Lorentz symmetry group, uh, the previously uh, defined as a spinner, uh, the supersymmetry generator uh, is reorganized itself to the scalar and one form uh, supercharges. And the one, uh, the scalar supercharge is important that it, it defines the Q cohomology and the one form supercharge is also important that it anti-commutes with the scalar supercharge to give, um, uh, the translation generator. So it means that some of the translation generator is Q exact and we can eliminate the dependence of some of the space-time coordinates from the physical observable. So we, we classify the twist in, in, the, in the sense that the topological twist is all the translation generators are Q exact and holomorphic twist is that some of the um, translation generator, which is anti-holomorphic translation generator is co-exact. So in, in the case of topological twist, uh, the space-time coordinate dependence is uh, gone in the Q, after passing to the Q cohomology. And in the, in the, in, uh, in the case of holomorphic twist, uh, the space-time dependence on the uh, anti-holomorphic dependence is gone and we only retains the hol holomorphic dependence in the uh, observable in the Q cohomology. And moreover, we can, uh, it is useful to introduce some kind of deformation on the twisted quantum field theory. And this is so-called omega deformation. And the condition is that uh, we need the uh, U1 isometry in the space-time. So for example, in our uh, two-plane, real two-plane, there is a U1 isometry, which is a rotation generator. And that is generated by some vector field B epsilon, and where epsilon is the parameter that parametrizes the omega deformation. And starting from the twisted quantum field theory, which is of Q cohomology of some quantum field theory, equipped with the one form supercharge that I described uh, a little bit, uh, with the omega deformation, we change or restrict the Q cohomology into Q epsilon cohomology. And what is Q epsilon? Q epsilon? So it is uh, constructed by combining the scalar supercharge and the one form supercharge in some particular way that we uh, contract the vector field with the one form supercharge to get uh, and add it to the scalar supercharge and construct the Q epsilon. And this Q epsilon uh, itself uh, doesn't seem to define the uh, nilpotent or Q cohomology because it, it, it squares to some finite quantity, which is exactly the vector, uh, the, the generator of the, uh, uh, the U1 isometry, which is non-zero. 
So in other words, to define the nilpotent or to, to epsilon cohomology, we need to uh, make sure that we restrict the operator that is captured by Q cohomology to some uh, subset, which is invariant under the rotation. So in other words, operators in the Q epsilon cohomology or under omega deformation localize at the fixed point of the rotation vector B. So basically dynamics localizes on some fixed point of the U on isometry under the uh, omega deformation. So given this basic knowledge, we can explain some uh, more tools in the twisted supergravity. And that is, uh, we, uh, when we incorporate the omega deformation in the twisted uh, supergravity, we, uh, we, we, we find some, uh, the killing spinner, which um, is previously squares to zero, nilpotent, uh, and we, we can find that uh, this killing spinner that squares to some vector field or the uh, rotation generator uh, uh, that is consistent with the uh, supergravity solution. So we will study some topological holomorphic background defined by this type of uh, killing spinner or bosonic host. And that squares to uh, the lead derivative of the vector field. So there are many uh, types of twisted holography like to type 2A, type 2B, and M theory. But now, uh, for now, I'll focus on some twisted holography for M theory. So uh, the background is described by, uh, defined by a triplet. First, uh, the bosonic ghost that defines the twisted background and metric and the M theory three form. So the metric is the uh, 11 dimensional space time is a seven dimensional um, manifold with, two, with G2 holonomy and hyperkeller manifold, which is fourfold. So total 11 dimension. And the seven dimensional topological uh, G2 manifold is simply uh, three complex planes with, uh, with equipped with the three different omega background and uh, are uh, the real line, which, we, which you can think of as a time. And the hyperkeller manifold is a, the simplest kind, is a two complex plane, which is parametrized by Z and W. And we will consider two of the three complex planes in the topological direction at the top knot manifold, where the, um, there is a vector field uh, generating the rotation of the top knot circle. And also the three, M theory three form is uh, given by the linear dual of the vector field that I just described, tensor uh, wedge with the uh, anti-holomorphic top form in the hyperkeller manifold. And the bosonic ghost uh, is the field, uh, the ghost such that it generates the topological, seven direction topological and four direction holomorphic. And there's a three omega deformation parameter that sums up to zero to satisfy the Calabi out threefold condition. So I just uh, briefly described the gravity background and I'll uh, move on to the field theory. So the, we can introduce the <clears throat> two types of membranes in the M theory. And uh, we uh, introduced the N1, M2 brain and another uh, M5 brain such that uh, I orient the M2 brain in one of the uh, complex plane in the topological directions and the real line uh, and also on the real line in the topological direction. So it, 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 it precisely in the uh, three directions out of uh, seven directions in topological direction. And also and I orient the M5 brain uh, in the two of the complex uh, planes out of the three complex planes in the topological direction and also it extends over one of the complex plane, uh, one of the two complex planes in the holomorphic directions. I'll also remind you later uh, when I describe it more precisely. So it, um, I just is, described- Is the M5 and uh, M5 brain lying along the time direction too? No, M5 brain is a, a point in the time direction. But uh, M2, M5, are they, are they mutually VPS? Probably not. 
Or I'm just wondering whether they are mutually BPS. Uh, well, let's say they are. Sorry, uh, I'll, I'll first uh, just set up like this and just go on without like uh, uh, introducing both in the same, us, us at the same place. Okay, thank you. So now it is useful to go to a uh, type 2A frame to compute something. And we go to type 2A frame by reducing a circle uh, that I described as a top knot circle. So uh, in, in, uh, after reducing the circle in top knot uh, circle, we go, uh, the gravity background becomes the type 2A supergravity. And uh, <clears throat> because of the top knot geometry, we get the K D6 frames. And the M theory three form becomes a B field, which creates a non-commutative background on the hyperkeller manifold, which, which is four holomorphic direction. And, um, and Costello showed that, uh, so I, I should remind you that out of seven direction of topological, because we reduce one direction, we, we get uh, six topological direction and four holomorphic direction. So in, in terms of the um, topological string language, this is A model, six direction, and B model, four directions. And Costello showed that uh, four holomorphic direction with the, in the presence of the B field, um, or B, B model with, with B field is, is uh, A model is equivalent to A model and the gravity, uh, so the closed string spectrum in, in, in this uh, supergravity uh, is, is decoupled because uh, everything becomes a topological. So in this way, we uh, decouple the gravity uh, from the um, a closed string uh, a spectrum from the gravity gravity side, and we only get the uh, open string that is coming from the D6 frames. And we should also remember there's a B field turned on in the four directions inside the world volume of D6 frames. So D6 frames um, world volume theory is a seven dimensional super young middle that is on the three directions on topological and the four direction in holomorphic. And by Costello and Yagi, um, because uh, we we uh, we should take into account of the omega deformation on the topological direction, and by Costello and Yagi, uh, the seven-dimensional super young mills on the uh, omega deformed plane is uh, localizes into the five D topological holomorphic transcendence theory. And I'll describe what is five D topological holomorphic transcendence theory. And the Lagrangian is given by this next line. And the coefficient refers to the uh, omega deformation effect. And the DZDW uh, is a difference between the usual transcendence theory in five dimension, because it resembles the three dimensional transcendence theory uh, action like this. And in front, there is a top holomorphic top form in the uh, hyperkeller manifold. Accordingly, A only has a component, three components that is in T direction and all two anti-holomorphic direction. And it is supported on the three, uh, five directions and one direction in topological uh, manifold and the four direction in uh, extending over all the holomorphic manifold. And another difference is because of the non-commutativity background, the wedge product between A, A, becomes the uh, Moyal product. So I only described the Moyal product between the holomorphic function below, but we need to take into account that the wedge product um, uh, when we fully compute the action. And this uh, non-commutative parameter epsilon two enters here and there and goes up. And it is quite complicated action and uh, quite unconventional, but it is possible to show that it is a renormalizable and gauge invariant. So uh, we need to, uh, we can study some properties of the theory. 
first of all, the gate, the, uh, the symmetry of the theory, the gauge symmetry of the theory is given by the universal enveloping algebra, some possible uh, deformation of that, of um, uh, algebra of holomorphic functions on the non-commutative two complex planes uh, tensor with the GL, usual GL, GLK factor that is coming from the Champagne factor of the D6 frames. So because uh, the uh, equations of motion tells us that there is no um, physical degrees of freedom, uh, we, we extend the concept of the uh, algebra uh, observables into uh, cons uh, containing the uh, positive ghost, no ghost number modes. And we, we call that uh, algebra of observables as um, this universal enveloping algebra and call it as observable of the 5D gauge theory. And the major difference, of course, uh, between the usual Schrodinger Simons theory al algebra is that uh, this factor, and we can understand this uh, gauge symmetry factor by extending the ga gauge transformation, which is a map from the uh, four, four holomorphic direction, uh, the hyperkähler manifold to GLK. And we, we can expand it in uh, Z and W holomorphic coordinates. And this is precisely uh, 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 after taking into account of the uh, non-commutativity background, this is precisely the uh, algebra of differential uh, operators on the com complex plane. So this uh, this is uh, this vector is coming from this vector, and this uh, the algebra vector is the GLK factor, usual GLK factor, and this consists of uh, the uh, symmet uh, gauge symmetry. So I have described the uh, the uh, gravity side. So now I'll go on to the, what well, is the field theory on the M2 brain. So I'll, I'll remind you that uh, it extends over three uh, topological directions in, inside a seven to, uh, topological G2 manifold. And in type 2A, because we reduce uh, the uh, circle in the other direction than world, world volume direction, we, we, get, we retain all the three direction and get the D2 brains. Because of the D6 brain, it has another flavor. And the row volume theory on the D2 brain is uh, simply a four dimensional N equal four quantum field theory with the gauge group UN um, and one fundamental hypermultiplet and one adjoint, uh, one adjoint hypermultiplet. This is, uh, UV, uh, this is known as the UV gauge, uh, gauge theory for the ABJM. So the field content of the theory is summarized in the uh, in the below diagram, and there is a uh, this is linear quiver with the gauge node n circle circle node n and the square node, um, which is uh, for uh, the six brains, and uh, uh, i and j are the uh, scalar of the fundamental multiplet of the D two brain theory. And X and Y are the scalar of the adjoint hypermultiplet. So we, uh, remember that we have a topological background on entire 3D. So we uh, this uh, field theory inherits the topological twist from the supergravity background. So in other words, we turn on the top topological twist and we can focus on the Q cohomology of this particular supercharge known as rosansky witten uh, supercharge. We can also uh, uh, consider some uh, another uh, super, uh, twist, which is known as mirror rosansky witten twist or the twisted rosansky witten twist. But we'll, for now, let's focus on uh, this particular supercharge and consider this uh, particular cohomology. And it is known that uh, this cohomology is uh, same as the captured by the Higgs branch. And uh, uh, when we consider the physical observable, we need to consider the, uh, the gauge invariant operator consists of the Higgs branch uh, coordinates. So this is Higgs, uh, Higgs branch cover ring and the gauge invariant, uh, it consists of gauge invariant words modulo the F term relation. So for instance, uh, the gauge invariant words are simply like uh, open words starting from I and ending with J 
which are so you can you can think of it as a row vector and the column vector and x and y and n, n by n matrices and we can also take a trace of the product of the matrices but the uh, module of the afterm relation they are uh, they turn out to be equivalent there is a way to uh, rearrange the open words to the closed words uh, module of the afterm relation and I'll choose to uh, work with the open words that I'll define as TMN, where M and N are the power of X and Y uh, in the right-hand side. And I'll call this algebra as A, epsilon one and epsilon two. This is, I'll sometimes call, that, call it as M2 brain algebra. And you can see that epsilon two appears in the um, after relation and epsilon one, uh, I'll explain uh, soon. So uh, we uh, I have a question. That, sure. So this algebra is the algebra of this Higgs branch operator? Yes. Okay, so then isn't that just uh, the deformation quantization of the Higgs branch, corner ring Higgs branch? That's right. Oh, okay. But why it has the epsilon one, epsilon two deformation? So epsilon two comes from the uh, F term relation explicitly here. Uh, oh, okay. I highlighted, and epsilon one I'll explain to you. Okay, epsilon one is some some omega. That yes, that's okay. right. Okay. Here. Okay. So the Higgs branch car ring previously has the Poisson bracket that uh, is between the scalar components of the fundamental hypermultiple and an adjoint hypermultiple, and because of the omega deformation. Uh, this Poisson bracket becomes a commutator and the right-hand side of the commutator explicitly contains the epsilon one, which is omega deformation parameter. And that's why the uh, algebra has two parameters that's coming from epsilon one and epsilon two. And here, A, B, C, D are the uh, UN gauge indices. Um, and next, uh, the at the level of Lagrangian, the 3D theory localizes into the 1D theory. Uh, more precisely, 1D topo topological quantum mechanics uh, with the Lagrangian, simple Lagrangian given by this. And let's, uh, because I claim this is an algebra, let's, we can compute the explicit commutator of uh, gauge invariant words. Uh, I previously denoted as a TMN uh, to for the gauge invariant words. And we can explicitly compute the commutator by using the uh, basic relation, uh, uh, which I read, wrote here. So it turned out uh, it's a quite uh, simple but uh, important relation that I'll also revisit later. And this relation is the uh, simplest uh, rela uh, commutation relation for this algebra. And I'll, I'll, we'll see later in the gravity calculation. And of course, this A, B, C, D are the UK flavor indices, not the UN gauge indices, because I contracted all the gauge indices in this computation. And also note that uh, T00 is uh, n times epsilon 1. And in the large n limit, it, uh, we treat it as a central element of the algebra A. So I've just described the uh, M2 brain algebra, it's a good theory algebra. And Costello showed that this is the, uh, there is an isomorphism between the algebra of observable in the 5D gauge theory and this M2 brain algebra. And the dictionary is, uh, uh, so the proof is quite uh, very difficult, but we can at least uh, have some intuitive idea under this by, uh, con by comparing the, uh, this, if you recall, there's a universal unwoveling algebra of the uh, holomorphic uh, algebra of holomorphic function on the two planes times GLK. This is the definition of the observable of phi d. And uh, this, we can compare it with the TMN, uh, the algebra element of the A. And we can just, uh, uh, this is a dictionary between the uh, operator algebra. And the underlying principle, which is also, we, uh, you can also see as a derivation. Um, let me just explain as a, some abstract idea under it, and I'll describe it in, in some detail with, a, with some calculation. The underlying principle is so-called causal duality. 
And if, uh, in physical language, this is this exchanges ghost number zero operator, uh, which is a physical operator in the field theory side, and ghost number positive operator, which is in the uh, gravity side, captured by the 5D science theory. So this is kind of mathematician's version of holographic duality. And the logic is follows. So starting from some uh, algebra of observable uh, in the 5D, uh, turn science theory, which I'll call A, we can uh, call some, we can define some causal dual algebra A trick. And let's say the uh, element of the uh, A is C, an element of the causal dual part is T. And uh, it is defined as the, as uh, we can combine those two, to, uh, we can tensor those two um, to formulate some uh, object X inside this the tensor algebra. And the requirement for the causal duality is that it satisfied uh, the X uh, element satis should satisfy so-called Murray carton equation. This, so that you can understand it as a kind it, it ensures the BRC invariance of the uh, coupling X. So explicitly, the coupling is given um, is between the 5D uh, transignments observable and the uh, 1D topological quantum mechanics observable, and uh, by imposing this BRST invariance given by this Murray Carton equation, we can uniquely uh, uh, pick out what is uh, TMN, that is causal dual of the 5D transignments observable. And I'll explain in detail. Uh, so this is quite abstract version of the causal duality, but I'll explain in detail uh, in, in the following part. But so I the have concrete question. So yeah. um, the algebra of Higgs branch operator on the ADHM cleaver should be the uh, rational generic algebra. Yes. Uh, that is your A1D? Pardon? So is it A epsilon one epsilon two? Yes. Okay, and then you just introduce some observable from five D. Uh huh. That is called the dual of the rational chain algebra. Is that the, your claim? Yes, there is an isomorphism between that and the rational Turing algebra. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So the one concrete way to see is that, um, so uh, I previously said that Costello proved that the 5D transignments action is already BRSD invariant. But now we want to introduce the M2 brain defect inside the 5D transignments. And we should reassess what the BRSD invariance of the entire coupled Lagrangian. So the question is, what is the uh, quantum mechanically consistent anomaly free uh, coupled system? So this will precisely reflect the causal duality statement. So this is uh, in physical language, this is uh, to impose the BRST invariance of the 5D 1D couple system. And the way to see that is to analyze some, some set, certain set of Feynman diagrams. So here uh, I'll describe two Feynman diagrams. So first there is a, a 1D system of a topological line defect where the uh, quantum mechanical, topological quantum mechanics lives on, which is M2 brain or volume theory. And it interacts with the 5D gauge field um, with this particular interaction that I showed here. So with this uh, Feynman diagram with one loop, we can compute the uh, amplitude and we, we see that this is proportional to this vector. And after BRST uh, variation, this becomes like this vector. And we can also draw some similar Feynman diagram with, uh, has, which has the same uh, proportionality uh, factor uh, like this. So this is a second diagram and we can also compute this diagram which is a linear a tree level diagrams, uh, which is simply take all the factors from the diagrams and uh, write it like, like, like this. And uh, to, uh, by imposing the BRST invariance, we just sum over two uh, amplitudes together and impose that they are vanishing. And by equating these two, 
we explicitly get the uh, commutation relation that I uh, showed uh, in the in the uh, previous page when I described the M2 ring. So this kind of uh, condition for imposing the BRST invariance uh, uniquely fixes the M2 brain uh, or uh, the quantum mechanical degree of freedom that can uh, couple to the 5 d assignments. So this is another way to state the causal duality. So some remarks before I describe the M5 brain. Uh, so the large N, I haven't described well about the large N, but uh, it is important to remember that large N is necessary to match the algebra. And also the twisted holography of M2 brain is a subsector of ABJM in the sense that uh, uh, we can compactify the 5 d Schoen assignments uh, on the S3 and consider it's ADS2 times S3. And ADS2 has a boundary uh, which is where um, the 1D topological quantum mechanics lives on. So this is, we can understand is a subsector of the entire ADS4 times S, S7 holography, which, is all, which also describes the M2 brain uh, holography. So we can equ equally use, uh, and another point is that we can equally use the, another uh, uh, twist in the 3D N equal four theory, uh, which captures the Coulomb branch and it is known that the n equal, 3D n equal 4 Coulomb branch algebra uh, with the large n limit is the one shifted affine GL1 Yangin. And it'll be useful to compare uh, with the M5 brain example later, where the M5 brain algebra is uh, exactly the affine GL1 Yangin, which is not shifted. So let me go on to the field theory on the M5 brain. So I'll remind you that M5 brain is supported on one holomorphic direction and two topological direction, which is all complex. It is known that the world volume theory of N M5 brains is 60, 60 A N type 2 comma zero theory. And under, uh, by, by, by appealing to AGT, people have discovered that uh, after compactifying on the double omega defor deformed complex two planes, we get the WN algebra on the holomorphic plane. And of course, in the large N limit, this goes to W infinity algebra. And it is also known that W infinity algebra is isomorphic to affine GL1 Yangian, which indicates some relation between this M5 brain algebra and M2 brain algebra that, that I just described. So uh, from M5 brain, I'll be a little bit schematic because I uh, spend some time in the, uh, to describe in detail in the, for the M2 brain algebra. So the above argument goes through and we can see that the observable of the 5 d and Simons theory in the presence of the M5 brain is uh, universal enveloping algebra of the following Lie algebra. And the difference is um, this vector. So previously it was a whole, uh, algebra of holomorphic function on the two complex planes without puncture, but now we have a puncture because of the M5 ring. But still there is a non-commutativity parameter on the two complex two planes, and I'll restrict is uh, the Lie algebra factor GL1 because I just said, uh, I just restrict to one D6 frames uh, for uh, unnecessary complication to prevent. So this is known as uh, isomorphic to the W infinity algebra. And Costello showed that the isomorphism between the operator algebra of the 5 d Schoen Simons in the presence of the M5 brain and the W infinity algebra that lives on the M5 brain rod volume. So some, um, rather than explaining the, uh, the uh, the algebra of our operators on the M5 brain explicitly, let me just go um, uh, describe it in some intuitive way. So what is, uh, where is M2, uh, epsilon two, epsilon one and epsilon two parameters in W infinity because uh, I, I don't see it explicitly by just looking at the formula for W infinity algebra or the operator algebra on the W, uh, the, on the M5 brain. 
So first of all, there is a hidden triology in the W infinity algebra uh, observed by Gabriel Deal and Gopal Kumar and uh, between the epsilon one, epsilon two, and epsilon three, which is minus epsilon one, minus epsilon two. And also, as I emphasized, the W infinity algebra is isomorphic to affine GL1 Youngian. And it also, it's also known that affine GL1 Youngian has three uh, parameters that, is, uh, that has a hidden triality inside. I have one question. So here, sure. you already take large n limit. Oh. Of m, large n limit. Yes. Oh, so the number of m5 range goes to infinity. Yes. Okay, um, is there any some like a geometric transition will occur? Pardon? Like a, if you take, usually if you take large and limit of some uh, number of brain, um, geometry will change like a geometric transition. Yes. So, on. so I'm just wondering if some, some it, is there some effect of the large n to the geometry? Yes, I, I, so the, um, the back reaction is explicitly covered by this uh, puncture. I, uh, so that deforms the geometry by taking out the core of the M5 from the uh, forward, forward direction of the holomorphic, four holomorphic directions. Okay, so it's only that, okay, I see. And even previous case, you take large and limit of M2 brain, right? Uh huh. So both number of M2 and M5 goes to infinity somehow. Yes. Okay, okay, thanks. So large n uh, is, uh, we cannot see n explicitly in the uh, algebra in, in this case. But as I emphasize in M2 brain, we can see the uh, factor of n by t0,0 zero, zero, uh, factor. But we, the, the, the meaning of n like kind of disappears because it's kind of acts like an element of the algebra, not a number for this case. So, um, so there is a similar, similar to M2 brain case, there is, is a causal duality between the 5D system and the 2D system via the unique BRST coupling that is given by the 2D coupling uh, like this. So here, A is the 5D gauge field and the W is the spin M current, for instance, when we take n to two, it says a hol uh, holomorphic stress energy tensor. So let me be more general and try to uh, be more general on the field theory side of the M5 ring. We can also introduce uh, uh, different kinds of M5 ring over some different topological, extending over different topological directions. So I didn't uh, fix the, M5 brain direction precisely by denoting as epsilon i and epsilon, epsilon j. But we can, uh, the most general, gener general configuration is that we choose two out of three direction like this. So we can uh, gen in general introduce uh, three, three types of M5 brains uh, like this. I'll denote this number as L, M, N. So, uh, and also it is useful to go to type two B frame to describe it more precisely. So I have discussed M theory frame and type two A frame, and now I'll move on to type two B frame. So this is known as a corner of VOA configuration uh, by Gayoto and uh, This And this is given by uh, uh, the appealing to duality between M theory and uh, Taurus and uh, type, two A, type two B on uh, circle. So all the uh, M5 brains map to the D3 brains uh, at, at the face and the geometry, M theory geometry uh, maps to the, the skeleton in the PQF. And at the corner of this configuration, there leaves um, the, the truncation of the W infinity algebra which uh, takes into account all of all the uh, three different different types of uh, M5 rings or D3 rings, and we we can uh, we denote it as Y element. And cor by corner, I mean there's a intersection between the NS5 ring and D5 ring, and 
also the three brains at the face. So this is a 2D corner. And if I just take the uh, intersection between the NS5 brain and the 5 brain, this turns out to be a 5D topological holomorphic turn Simons as a boundary condition of the 5 brain on NS5 brain. So in other words, at the start, there is a 5D turn Simons theory and also uh, with the intersection with the D3 brain, uh, there is a 2D BOA structure inside. Moreover, we can also introduce the uh, N M2 brain and N2, uh, so th three types of M2 brains on the different directions, all, all of which uh, extends over the real direction and extends over some uh, different complex planes, which is labeled by epsilon one, two, three. So they are all mapped in the type 2B frame to uh, these edges, like a PQ string, like inside the PQ five brains. And we can put all together uh, in the type 2B frame and write this as follows. Uh, so in, at the face, there is M5 brain or D3 brains. And at the edges, there is a M2 brain and a D1 brains. So uh, uh, previous question, uh, to answer for the previous question, uh, we, we see that at, at the edge, uh, when we consider all the M2 brain and five brains, uh, the only condition we need to impose is a stability, I think. So um, at the edge, when we consider the configuration at the, uh, at, at the start, we have a 5 e Simons and the W algebra in the M5 brain and uh, some kind of topological quantum mechanics, which doesn't have any supersymmetry. So as long as we, uh, we uh, make sure there is a stability condition uh, satisfied, uh, the supersymmetric condition uh, can be gone. So this is the final configuration, uh, which is the most general, uh, that contains all the M2, M5, and the, uh, the transignment configuration. So I'll call this uh, the, more, the most general uh, M2 brain algebra is A, N1, N2, N3, where N1, N2, N3 are the number of M2 brains uh, that extends over different complex planes. And uh, WLMN is the M5 brain algebra that is labeled by different types of D3 brains uh, extending over three different phases. So this is a type 2B configuration. And uh, let me focus on this uh, corner uh, uh, to say more. So at this corner, as I said, as an intersection of NS5 brain and D5 brain, there is a 5D turn Simons. And the surface uh, or 2D uh, VOA comes from M5 brain and the line comes from the M2 brain. So in other words, uh, D1 brain intersects with the star by a 1D line. So we can uh, focus on this configuration that also encodes entire PQ web diagram that I drew in the left hand side. So in other words, I'll, I want to study now what is the how uh, what, what is a uh, the, mo the most general M2 brain and, and, and five brain algebra and how to how they interact with each other. So and Gayoto and Lapchuk uh, proposed a recipe to fuse uh, all the defects together and. Build, build out the most general uh, M2 brain algebra and M5 and brain algebra. The, uh, the language they, they, they used was a co-product uh, structure under the M2 brain algebra <clears throat> and co-product structure in the W algebra. And the co-product structure on, uh, of the W algebra is already studied by Rapchak and Prokaska and <clears throat> Their main, uh, their main result was to uh, propose the uh, co-product structure of A, uh, the M2 brain algebra, and how to fuse them together. Um, the, 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 strategy, the strategy that they used was to use the free field realization of A, the M2 brain algebra, and which is basically, uh, they consider the meromorphic differential operator that, is, uh, that has a parameter, let's say Z, 
and decompose Z into Z1, Z2, Z3. And uh, let's say the meromorphic differential operator, uh, differential operator that per is parameterized by Z is left hand side. And by decomposing Z into Z1, Z2, Z3, they obtain this uh, the right hand side. And, there, and that was their approach uh, in very short, short language. And uh, some intuitive picture is like this. So given that we have uh, uh, two, uh, so when we describe the, few, uh, the co product of the M2 brain algebra, we uh, consider this kind of figure. Um, so we approach two lines, line defects together and, to, and fuse them to uh, give a one line defect. And this induces uh, the co product structure. And so what I'm now describing is not really precise, but I'll, I'll describe in more detail in the, uh, in the gravity side computation later. And also we can fuse the two parallels of surface defects to discuss the uh, co-product structure of DW algebra. And similar to the thing that I described for the M2 brain algebra, we can also impose the BRST invariance of the junction configuration M2 and M5 brain inside of 5D chain assignments and derive the, uh, the fusion between the M2 brain and, and M5 brain algebra, which they, they described as a co-product between A and W. Um, I'll, I'll now describe how to understand the, uh, those co-product in the hol holographic language. So in the, in the gravity side, we can compute the Feynman diagrams to understand those co-products. So first of all, I'll, I'll classify those two, two types of fusion as a homogeneous fusion and the heterotic fusion. So Sorry, homogeneous- I have a question. Sure. In which sense this is holographic? So um, Gaioto Rapchak's description is about, uh, is to appeal to the free field realization of A and W algebra. So the, in, in some sense, this is a purely algebraic. For now, uh, what in, um, I'll describe the how they how we can derive those co-product structure by uh, by studying the coupling between those M two brain and M five brain with the five B turn signs. So in this sense, this is a bulk derivation of the same algebraic structure on the field theory uh, uh, that lives on the boundary field theory. The boundary of what? Sorry, I don't. Uh, so really... when I describe bulk, I, yeah. this is this means the five D and Simons, uh -huh. and when I describe boundary, this means M two brain or M five brain algebra, uh, the M two M five brain um, world volume uh, theory algebra. But it's which is living on four D because you consider five D and Simons as bulk, so the boundary is a four D. Oh, so I, I basically uh, assume that there is a compact dir directions inside the 5 d chern assignments, let's say S, S3, and consider the ADS2 and cons uh, consider the boundary of the ADS2 as a one-dimensional topological quantum mechanics. And also when I discuss a uh, 2D surface defect, this is the boundary of ADS3 with a compact direction S3, S, S2 inside the 5 d chern assignments. Okay, I see. Uh, uh, I have a question. Like, do do we yeah. know the do we know the chiral causal dual of this uh, W algebras? Chiral causal dual. Yeah, of this W algebras, the the causal dual of this W algebras. Uh, I I. I think the Kev, uh, Kevin explained it in, the, in his paper that the observable of the 5 d chern Simons in the presence of the M5 brain is the dual of the W algebra. Yeah, but, but do we have a description of the dual of the W algebra in terms of a, another nice carrier algebra or? Uh, that, not that I know of. Okay, thank you. So let's describe how to uh, compute the Feynman diagrams uh, and derive the co-product from the 5D-Chern assignments coupled with the 1D defect 
and the 2D surface defects. So first of all, classify the um, type of fusion. The homogeneous fusion is between the two types of uh, same types of defects. So first of all, I'll, I'll describe in detail about the OPE between the lines and just sketch the surface of fusion and the heterotic fusion later. So let's consider the two parallel lines and that interact with the 5D turn assignments with the coupling and the coupling constant is TA, which is the element of the topological quantum mechanics. And it interacts with the bulk through the three point interaction vertex inside the, uh, in, in the 5D turn assignments Lagrangian. And this uh, amplitude doesn't vanish only if there is a specific uh, external 5D turn assignments gauge mode attached. And the amplitude is, it, it, uh, can be uh, schematically Describe, be described by this uh, <clears throat> Wilson line like uh, Lagrangian. And we know that through the uh, cu uh, explicit coupling between the 5D turn assignments and the 1D topological quantum mechanics, uh, when we have this uh, particular uh, 5D turn assignments mode, we need to have a part partic particular turn, uh, 1D topological quantum mechanics element that couples to it. So. Uh, we can compare the left hand side and the right hand side and draw the uh, by making them equal we can uh, we can derive the <clears throat> map between the uh, uh, algebra a and the algebra a tensor with algebra a and this is the derivation of the co-product structure of the uh, m2 brain algebra so similarly, we can compute the similar Feynman diagram uh, that is uh, in, with the two surf uh, parallel surface defects, uh, which also has the interaction vertex that is related to the W algebra elements. And there is also the three point vertex that uh, the bulk interaction that describes the bulk interaction. And it also picks out some specific, a very specific 5D gauge modes coupled to it. And we can compare it uh, compare this the result of the computation and uh, a specific uh, 2D coupling between the W algebra element of the 5D gauge mode, uh, which is determined by the BRSD uh, invariant coupling, and draw the uh, the and and derive the explicit map explicit uh, co-product map between the W algebra and the, the two W algebra tensor together. And this is a description for the homogeneous fusion. And uh, the heterotic fusion is a little bit different, but it is in the same line with the uh, BR, uh, imposing the BRSD invariance uh, where uh, the M2 brain algebra was derived. So we consider all possible uh, Feynman diagram that can, uh, that can participate in some certain amplitude and take the BRST, invariant, a BRST variation and impose them uh, to vanish. So in this way, we can explicitly derive the heterotic fusion or co-product in this way. Uh, okay. And uh, we also, uh, but uh, Gayoto Rapchak didn't uh, consider this, but we also compute this transverse surface defect fusion so which is to be compared with the parallel surface defect fusion, which I described here. And we, all, uh, we conjectured that they <clears throat> leads to some two surface, uh, two uh, W algebra. Uh, so in, in the right-hand side, we derived that two surface defects, uh, which couples to, each of which couple to the uh, W algebra modes and also the line defect that couples to the a, uh, algebra A modes. And also all the uh, diagrams that I described uh, above are one loop exact because uh, we can explicitly show that this kind of uh, lag correction, the, the correction on the propagator and the correction on the three, uh, three point vertex are all vanishing due to the property of the uh, gauge boson propagator inside in, in the 5D turn science. So this is the end of my talk, and this uh, I'll just end, end, end my talk by uh, 
giving some open questions that I'm now considering. So I have described the uh, 2D and 1D defect inside the 5D chain assignments. And uh, the last defect that I can think of is the 4D uh, domain wall type defect. And this is a pure, uh, uh, as Satoshi uh, pointed out, this is the real uh, kind of boundary of the 5D chain assignments. So previously, I, I assumed that there is a compact direction inside the 5D chain assignments. And after compactifying, we can describe the, uh, the true boundary of some uh, lower dimensional theory, uh, gravity theory. But this is a, uh, uh, with the, the 4D domain wall, we can discuss about the true boundary of the 5D chain assignments. And mathematicians, some mathematicians uh, identified the algebra of operators on the 4D holomorphic theory as a higher vertex operator algebra. And we, we, we guess this uh, higher vertex operator algebra will, can be used to describe this uh, uh, conjectural twisted holography that involved the 4D domain wall. And this is all what work in progress with Ihao Zhu and Junya Yagi. And also the other open question is uh, how the above statements about the <clears throat> M2 brain and M5 brain change when we change the internal um, topological uh, three complex planes, which is all omega, defer, omega deformed uh, to the general Tori Calabiao uh, with the omega de three omega deformation. So, the, uh, okay. So that's all I have and thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Um, question from audience. Um, so what is the reason why the, the M2 brain algebra and also M5 brain algebra co should coincide at large n. Oh, they do not coincide in large n. So M2 not? brain algebra is a one shifted affine Youngian and uh -huh. the M5 brain algebra is not shifted, just a GL1 Youngian. Oh, so M2 brain algebra is a sub algebra of an M5 brain algebra. Uh -huh. I see. So in some sense, I expect the higher VOA or the domain wall algebra is kind of like a super, like it's a bigger algebra than the M5 brain algebra. I see. I see. But how, how do you, and also another question is, how do you, how to say, capture the algebra surface defect? Oh, yes, yeah. so I can des uh, describe a little bit better because I have some time now. Uh, so if you see this uh, operator here, uh -huh. so psi bar and psi are the pair of chiral fermion that comes from the D4 and D6 strings. Okay. So D4 is a M5 brain. So after reducing on the top null circle, M5 brain becomes D4. So we can compute the algebra of operators uh, by combining all the fields that would leave on the M5 ring, which is a 2D in the, in the context of the 5D string science. So the D4, D6 strings becomes psi and psi bar. And mm -hmm. we, we, uh, we, we, we multiply with the, gate, uh, with the matrix that contract the gauge indices and the uh, possible uh, contribution from the holomorphic function or uh, Z to the M or W to the N uh, to, uh, to take into account of the, uh, the, the, uh, the part of the algebra that, is, uh, uh, that consists of the universal enveloping algebra of the entire operator, operator algebra of the M5 ring. So this is, the, uh, this is how to compute the uh, gauge invariant operator on the M5 brain, which is similar to the uh, M2 brain algebra computation. Mm -hmm. So we can explicitly compute the commutator of this object with, with, by 
uh, having some different number other than M and N that is uh, written in this uh, operator. So because Z and partial Z uh, has a nice commutation relation between them, which mm -hmm. commits to epsilon two because of the non-commutativity background, uh, it has a non-trivial commutation relation between other operators. Uh -huh. And we can make sense that this is indeed the universal enveloping algebra of the algebra of operators on C times C star uh, and tensor with the GLK, where K is the number of these six frames. I see. Um, any other question from audience? If not, let's thank the speaker. Um, I will stop.